group of eagles. Uh, a group of eagles. A convocation? Yeah. Is it? Yep. Okay. Uh, a group of toads is called. Oh, group of toads. A pad? A pad of toads? Knot. A knot of toads? A N O T. Oh, okay. Uh, a group of hummingbirds. A chirp. Close. Ah. Uh, go ahead. Charm. A charm. I was close. <laughs> what else you got, Roost? Uh, geese on water. Ooh, um, that's different than the air? Yep. They change name as they land? Yep. Uh, on, in, in the air, of course, they're a flock? No. A swarm. What are geese in the air? Wait, you said no to my other ones. That would mean that you know the answer. Well, I'm not sure on the air. It could be a was on the ground. Could be a flock. Still could be a flock. It could be. On the ground is a flock. So on ground is a flock of... There's three, you think? It might be three. I think there's one for her on the air. The water is a skein. A skein. A skein of geese. A flock on the ground. And a flutter in the air, I think, is what it is. No, it's not. It is a flock in the air. It's a gaggle on the ground. Ah, uh, flock in the air, gaggle on the ground, skein on the water. Good, GG. Well, if you guys can't tell, we are playing road trip games. Road trip games to stay awake tonight. Me and old Rooster. Where we're going, what are we doing? You're just gonna have to hang in and hang on to find out. South side of the road. Hey y'all, I gotta share this with you real quick, okay? This was my realization this past week that I've turned a true corner, and let me tell you what I mean. If you remember a couple weeks ago, I shared with you guys the fact that since the 1st of January, more or less, I have been on a fitness program with a company called Be Lean Fitness. Now, Be Lean has tailored their entire fitness program for truckers, okay? They've come up with this program that works within the bounds of a trucker's schedule and constraints. Uh, I'm just going to update you on my journey. It's now been a couple months total since I've been doing this deal. And I am now 21 pounds down. So I continue to lose weight, get more trim. I'm feeling better. When I'm on the road, I just can't explain how great it is. One, because I'm more comfortable actually just sitting in my seat as I drive. Like I feel better sitting there uh, with less weight around my belly, right? And then the second thing is, and this is what I wanted to share with you, and I'm, I have, I'm holding the evidence right here in my hand. I haven't shown it to you yet. But the other thing is that through doing this program, my cravings and my inability to go into a truck stop and have control over what I'm going to buy are gone. I can walk in and I can pay for my fuel and I can look at everything in there and go, no, I don't want that and be happy with that decision. You know, I've had times in the past where I was like, oh, I better not get that, it's not good for me. Man, I'm kicking rocks as I'm walking out to my truck. I should have got those Twinkies, whatever. <laughs> but I can look at it now with true like, no, nah, I, I just have no desire for that. Check this out, you guys. Here in my hand, I hold a full plate of homemade brownies. Now these aren't like cake brownies. These are like heavy, substantial, like I'm getting a workout right now lifting these brownies up and down. Let me tell you, I loaded cattle the other day and they came out with the plate full of brownies and said, take these on your trip and enjoy them. We just made them, they're fresh homemade. I took these with me, this was three days ago. I set them on the passenger seat across from me in the truck and I made my whole 1500 mile trip down and back and never one time did I have a craving to break into these and eat them. Instead, I brought them home for the kids. A couple of months ago, I would have devoured this entire plate in the first 200 miles, no question. They would have been long gone, down the hatch, marinating around my belly. I'm gonna go in and enjoy a small portion of one of these, and I'm gonna do that happily, and I'm gonna do it in control, and that control and that happiness has come from 
doing this program with Be Lean Fitness. So Be Lean, you guys, I really appreciate the help you've given me. If you guys are interested in this, please check them out. If you're a trucker, as most of us are, that need to gain more control over your life and your fitness, I promise it's worth it. They've got all kinds of different plans available to you. Get with these guys, chat with them, see what you need to do, get on track. I promise you'll never look back. <laughs> oh baby, what is this, you guys? What is this little treasure? Do you know, do you know? <laughs> any of you truckers out there trucked in one of these? Is this bringing back any memories to anybody? Do you fondly recall looking down at these gauges? One of these very first ever unibuilt sleepers ever in a semi. Huh? What do you say? Look at this clean old girl. Look at this old girl. Dashboard's not all tore up. Look at the originality. OEM. Give me that Jacob's brake. That dashboard is clean. She ain't all rattled out. Doesn't have 75 holes in it. Just feast your eyes for a minute, you guys. Just take this baby in. Just take this creature in. <laughs> Look at that thing. Call that original? I think I would. Woo! Cassette deck. Good golly. <laughs> I don't know. Actually, I do know. I do know, you guys. I am rolling in a 1988 Ancient Great white GMC conventional semi bring you up to speed all right so what's going on as you may have noticed from previous videos a lot of my videos I love trucks you guys ever since I was a wee boy I've loved trucks this truck is only two years younger than myself Wow imagine that just a couple old boys from the 80s out here just, just cruising along some of you, being from the 80s, is going to seem like, wow, that was a long time ago. And to some of you guys, being from the 80s, is going to be like, the 80s was just yesterday. I remember the 60s. What are you talking about, the 80s? Anyhow, I love trucks. Uh, I've decided that due to my love of trucks, I would like to try to figure out a way to kind of harness that love slash desire slash addiction that I have with trucks into something that might be good. Here's what I got going. I bought a few trucks with the intention of fixing them, cleaning them, shining them, running them around, putting some miles on them and making sure that they are good and selling those trucks. See, I can look at trucks for hours and hours, week after week. I have for years and years. And I've realized that in doing that, there are times where I come across a rig or two that are an incredibly good deal. Like this rig. Uh, remember the black Kenworth, the T600 that I brought home? It's like, this is just too good of a deal to pass up. And living where we do, there's a fair amount of need for trucks, for good old trucks. There's a lot of agriculture operations that are in need of trucks. See, the last month or so, I've had two or three different people say, hey, do you know of where there's a good truck for sale I could buy for the farm or for the ranch or for et cetera? And it got me to thinking, if I'm having people asking me for trucks or trailers, I happen to love looking for trucks and trailers, why not put those two things together and just pick up a few trucks? I've got the shop, I've got a little bit of know-how, I've got a lot of love for the industry. Let's make some good trucks. Let's, let's turn them around and kick them back out in the wild, you know? And I'm not talking like a quick flip, like, you know, oh, I bought this and I just double my money, turn around and look. Like, I want to get them, go through them, want to clean them up, want to run them down the road, want to make sure they're legit. Because I, as perhaps many of you have experienced, most of the times when you buy a used truck, you end up 
having to put another fifteen to twenty thousand dollars into that semi in the first year that you own it. And uh, you know, sometimes that's not the case if you spend a lot, a lot of money on a truck. But usually, any truck that you buy from you know thirty to seventy thousand dollars, oftentimes you end up spending a fair bit of cash to get that truck road ready and rolling. I wanted to try to take some of the sting out of that. My point is, I'm not trying to cut any corners. I'm not trying to do anything that's shady or shysty. I don't want to. I don't want to get into that side of the truck used truck business. You know, there's plenty of that all over the country, as we've all probably experienced a time or two. So when I was watching some auctions, I found this little baby in the town of Tilden, Nebraska. This truck was purchased by two good old boys, two brothers that farm out of Tilden. Uh, Eldon and Otto Take. I'm not sure if I pronounced their last name right, but anyhow, they bought this truck back in early 2000, and I've had it all these years since. And it was time for them. I think they kind of were passing the farm on to the next generation. The next generation didn't really care for some of the older stuff, like this rig. And uh, so they were kind of cleaning up and clearing some stuff out, which is why this truck came up on the auction. Found it in the middle of the night, woke up to use the bathroom, couldn't go back to sleep. It was like, ah, you know, the auction ends tomorrow. I should see if there's any other trucks out there that are catching my eye. That's where this guy came in. GMC was eventually bought out by Volvo or however that acquisition happened. And this, this truck in a few years down the road became Volvo. But before it was Volvo, it was white GMC. It has a B model mechanical cat motor, great great motors. Same motor that I have in my cab over Peterbilt. And uh, so I've had some experience with those and I've had good luck with them. And I I grabbed it because in the pictures it looked really clean. Uh, you saw there I showed you already how clean it actually is. This truck, I will say it. Look at that wood trim up there. It's a 10 for 10. Inside, it is a 10 for 10. And I'll show you some more points when I stop. We get home and I can go through this a little closer with you and show you some of the things that I have decided make it a 10 out of a 10. I think you'll you'll come to agree. I've never experienced a truck like this. It is like as much of a time capsule as I've ever seen. There's a little backstory for you. We are a couple hundred miles back up the road. We got several hundred more to go. Of course, this thing, knock on wood, which is easy to do because back in 88, they actually made things out of wood like the storage cabinets. <laughs> so uh, knock on wood, everything is just running nice and proper, all right? Things are just rolling down the road, feeling good, smooth. It feels very much like my cab over Peterbilt does, so I'm, I'm digging that. Um, temperature, oil pressures, everything seems great. I was really excited, you guys, when I pulled the dipstick on this thing to check the oil, and the oil was clean enough that you could see through the oil and read the dipstick below the oil. That's rare. You know when you change the oil in a semi, you drive it just a few hundred miles and it immediately is blackened again. It's blackened oil to where it'll, you know, it's very easy to see the oil on the dipstick. That was a good sign. Uh, fired right up. They cold started this thing. I would have loved to film a little more of all of that, but we were kind of in a scramble and a rush this morning, as I usually am. However, fired right up in the cold, unplugged, uh, that was a positive sign. It was about 30 degrees. Not that that's that cold, but in the truck world, that is cold. I uh, Much colder than that, I would always have a truck plugged in because I hate cold starts, you guys. One of my pet peeves of the internet, watch this cold start video. And you just hear that starter just whining and then it finally fires and it's blowing smoke and I'm like, stop, 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 enough. Okay, I can't take it anymore. Shut it off, plug it in. Oh, I can't stand cold starts. Just a little something about me. Coming up on Presho, South Dakota, about another 20 miles away. The glass in this, no cracks in the glass. A couple chips over there on the passenger side, but no cracks. That's awesome. Got the sweet bug deflector down there. Maybe that's part of why there's not as many chips. I don't know. Maybe it's deflected a few sh stray shots, you know, but um, <laughs> I just, just hope you're enjoying this as much as I am. Man alive. favorite things about old truck steering wheels is how big they are. Check out this big old mama. <laughs> nice and straight. Um, reason why they put big steering wheels in trucks back in the day? 
uh, they don't tilt. Well, part of it was because a lot of them didn't have power steering and it gave you a lot more leverage. But they didn't start shrinking steering wheels until they came out with the tilt wheel. This does not have cruise control. It does not have a tilt wheel. So the wheel's so big that you can push your seat way back, lean back, and just put your arm right here rather than having to reach way out and grab a smaller steering wheel up here. So, a little nugget for you. Y'all, hey everything's going good. It's going good. We are halfway home. We are 400 and some miles into this trip. Everything's running properly. The old B model beneath my feet because that's kind of how these trucks are set up. The cab is kind of partially over the engine. Not, not, nothing like a cab over, but it's right there, Ew, right down there. Just humming along, humming a tune, humming a song, you guys, humming a tune, humming a song. However, I worry, I'm starting to get attached to this truck more and more as I drive. Uh, let me show you this. So mechanical trucks do not have a cruise control. However, they do have an idle controller, so if you're parked there at night or something, you need to run your engine to stay warm, you can pull that idle control out, and that'll control your throttle and lock it in place. So, this does not work very well if you're loaded, if you're pulling hills, et cetera, et cetera. When you're bobtailing empty, it does work. So I pulled it out, set it right there at about 63 or so, and we are uh, bopping along. Gotta fix that tachometer, but uh, we are b bop -a -loo, baby. Finally get a little peek at this old girl on the outside, huh? <laughs> Listen to that old B model. Hey y'all, little side mission tonight. Little side mission we got down here at Billings. And I gotta pick up <clears throat> gotta pick up the old trailer and bring her on back. Got a guy interested in buying this trailer. So, we're picking her up from Matt's place and uh, anyhow, bringing her back up to the old ranch. And while I was down here in town, just thought we'd swing in and hook up. I can drop my airbags to get under there though. Oh. Work the bags. We got plenty of room. Now we can raise the bags up since we're underneath here. I always want to double, triple, quadruple check this stuff so you don't tear anything up. So, we will do this. Inflate those bags. Come back out. See how they're filling back up? Whoop! Look you there. Bada bing, bada boom. It up. Oh yeah. See if it lifted the jacks off the ground. Yep. Legs are loose so we can get under it now. I'm having a little trouble getting it to latch. So I'm in. I'm pinned in there. See it's in place. There's a little bar that's supposed to come across there. And it's not but it's just because it hasn't been used in a long time. So that baby in. I'll show you here. See now how that bar came across there? Locks it in place, see? So we'll lube that thing up. Part of what a cleanup we'll do on this truck, but get that lubed up and squared away, locked in there, and we'll be good to, good to go. Make sure that, see that little, uh, little locking tab right there? My pinky's on. You make sure that's in and down. Because <laughs> that's what keeps it from coming back out. So there we are. She's aired up. Look at all them lights. Hope. <laughs> Let's go. And I tell you this right now, this thing feels a whole lot better already with that trailer back there. After all that 800 miles of bobtail, man, feeling pretty good.